We are going to talk about tension today. Um, it seems like that is the one thing that we just cannot seem to conquer, and it's such an easy thing to conquer. Um, um, it, it, it is one thing that I will just tell you that I did cry over a lot when I first started long arm quilting, and um, I just didn't have anybody to help me. So I want to help you today. I want to help you overcome it and to get confident in it. And I, I might step on some toes today, and if I do, please forgive me. Don't hate me. Um, I, I might repeat some things that have been said before, but just just go with it, okay? Um, you are breaking up sound-wise. Oh, no, I have my mic on. I hope it's not my internet. Um, I'm going to keep going, though, okay? Okay. So the first thing I want to do is talk about, you know, we have a couple of different machine models out there and some have tension numbers on them and some do not, okay? So first let's talk about the Quiltmaker Pro 18, the Quiltmaker 18, and the Quiltmaker Pro 20, okay? Those all have tension numbers on them, okay? The Quiltmaker 18 and the Quiltmaker Pro 18 have the same tension units on them. So they will range greatly in number. One day you might be on 150, the next day you might be on 550, the next day you might be on 350. Um, your neighbor is gonna be on one number that's completely different than you and y'all might be using the same exact thread, okay? We cannot depend on one another of what tension number we are on, okay? If Susie Q uses Omni and Super Bob's and she uses her machine on 156, and you use the exact same thing and you're on 359, that is okay, okay? Now, if you have a Quilt Maker Pro 20, you're gonna have a very small range of numbers. Like right now, my machine is set like on 54, and I probably won't range anywhere from like 30 something to maybe 60 something. I will never go to like all, all the way up to 100. It has a very small range. So we can't, we really do not need to be dependent upon numbers because it's gonna get, the more models that Janome comes out with with long arms, the more confusing it will be if we're all depending upon numbers, okay? And let me help you become an independent person, not a dependent person on a number, okay? Um, Jenny says that my video keeps buffering. I don't know if this is something that we're going to struggle with. I don't know if it is my internet. Um, we are working on seeing if there's a different internet provider in our area. We've lived here before and had no problem with our internet, so I don't know. But I'm going to continue on, okay? I hope that some people might not be having issues. Um, but anyway, okay, so continue on. So, but my point being is let's quit being hung up on our, what our number is on our tension dial, okay? Today, everything I'm going to teach you is going to show you that you can just pretend like it doesn't exist. And if you do that, I think you might become more mm, independent, I don't mean to keep using that word, um, of learning how to conquer your tension and, and conquering your machine, okay? Okay, so let's talk about the different things that change our tension, okay? So it could be lint in our bobbin case. It could be lint in, on that flap that's on our bobbin case, which is, okay, this is the flap right here, okay? Sometimes you can't see that lint that's underneath it. So sometimes I take a straight pen and I actually will look and see if there's lint and even use that straight pen to kind of pull that lint out, okay? The other day I was quilting and there was lint that was stuck up in here, but I couldn't see it in the flap at all. And once I pulled it out of that little bitty crevice that it was in, my tension went back to perfect again. So this is something that I always check when my tension all of a sudden goes wacky on me, okay? Um, and of course, if there's lint in your spring area, you need to clean that, okay? Um, another thing that changes our tension is just our bobbin getting smaller as we're quilting, okay? The weight, even though the weight of our bobbins is very little, the weight of our bobbin changing does change 
our tension, okay? So it's okay if you're in the middle of a row and you're in the middle of a bobbin and all of a sudden you have to slightly adjust your tension. That's okay. It's not a big deal. You can do that. Um, other things that um, uh, change our tension could be um, winding our bobbins, okay? So let me help you understand that a little bit. If you're winding your own bobbins on your bobbin winder, and that's completely okay if you do, okay? If you are starting out and you're sewing really slow or you're winding them really slow because you're trying to make sure it gets started good and then you start to speed up and then you realize it's not doing it evenly so you kind of slow down and you try to help it a little bit to get more even and then you start speeding back up again, what you are doing is changing the tension as it's winding that bobbin, okay? Which is going to affect how it sews when you start to use that bobbin, okay? So, I'm gonna tell you a little secret here, and maybe I shouldn't, but I'm going to. Um, I have never used my bobbin winder. My bobbin winder is still in the box with the tape on it, okay? I use pre-wound bobbins. Um, I always joke that I'm a princess and princesses don't wind their own bobbins, but really, I just don't want the I don't want to waste the time winding my bobbins and I don't want to waste the uh, frustration of if that is going to cause me any tension issues. So I want to show you the two different kinds of bobbins that I use, okay? So one of them is called Deco Bobs, okay, and they're by Wonderfill Thread. Wonderfill is a Canadian company. Um, you can find some local quilt shops that do shell, sell Wonderfill. Um, I know that one of my favorite dealers sells this, Chattanooga Sewing. Um, but I, I don't know other, other shops. They would have to do a shout out for them. Um, but you can buy it online, okay? Wonderfill Deco Bobs, size M. They have plastic sides. They're 80 weight, and they do not lint at all. So any of that lint that is in your bobbin case area will be from your top thread, but not from this thread. My other, my secondary favorite is Superior Super Bobs. They're size M. Now they have cardboard size, okay? Um, and lots of quilt shops will sell these also, or you can get them online, okay? But support your local quilt shop if you can, okay? Um, now, when I do use these, there's a secret to these. You have to take off the cardboard sides and they'll look like this when you do, okay? Oh, they stay together. They don't fall apart, okay? If you don't take off the cardboard sides, then you could accidentally, just from handling them to put them into your bobbin case, um, can bend them up and then that changes your tension, okay? Okay, so if you haven't tried pre wound bobbins, please try them. If you are determined to use your bobbin winder, and that is A-OK, -okay, because you want your top thread and your bobbin thread to be exactly the same color, because you're OCD, and that is A-OK, -okay, then um, Jeannie has offered to make a video of showing you all the different things you can do with that bobbin winder to help you wind more perfect bobbins. And her and I will coordinate and get together with doing a segment on bobbin winder, uh, on the bobbin winder. We also do have videos, but she has, um, I kind of twisted her arm and said, Jenny, will you um, do a video on bobbin winders for us? And she said, sure I will, because you know why she always is nice like that. Okay, so, um, but winding your own bobbins can be a um, game changer if you buy pre-wounds, okay? Um, I'm trying to cheat right now and look at my notes to make sure I don't forget to tell y'all something. Um, okay, let me give you another scenario. Am I going to pick on somebody right now? Probably, sorry. So, I see this, not maybe this exact story, but I see this all the time on our Facebook page. Susie Q will get on there and she'll be like, so yesterday I was quilting my quilt and my tension was on 150. And um, I couldn't finish, so I shut everything down. I came back today, I'm quilting the same quilt, the same thread, the same bobbin, and it will not sew on 150. My machine's a lemon. I don't know why. Why will it not sew exactly what I had it set on yesterday, today? You know what? I don't know. But I will tell you that these things have happened to me too. 
And one day I was frustrated just like that. And so I called Wonderfill because that was the thread I was using that day. And I verbatim almost said exactly what I just said. And she said, well, is your weather drastically different than it was yesterday where you're at? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I'm not the weatherman. I don't know. But anyway, she's like, well, sometimes, especially if you're in a drier climate, you can, you know, those little, they're like circular things you can sit underneath your spool and they're made of cotton. I don't know what they're called. Um, but usually you put them like underneath your thread if you're doing an embroidery machine or something. If you don't have those, she told me I could um, dampen a paper towel and put it underneath my spool of thread. But she said sometimes our thread needs just a little bit of moisture. And if we put something underneath our spool of thread, it could change a whole ball game for us. And I actually tried it that day and lo and behold, it worked. So just remember that even our weather, the humidity, all different kinds of things will affect the way our thread interacts with our machine, okay? Let me tell you something else to think about. Um, I personally, and I'm gonna show you in just a second, set my bobbin tension very loose, okay? And there's a lot of grace and forgiveness with how all of us set our bobbin tension and our top tension, okay? But if we set our bobbin tension loose, then we get to set our top tension loose, okay? If we are more on the tighter side of setting our bobbin tension, then we're gonna have to set our top tension a little bit tighter. And guess what? When we have to set our top tension a little bit tighter, guess what we're gonna have more likelihood of having? Thread breaks, okay? So, remember, when setting our bobbin tension, because that's the foundation of us getting good tension, let's go on the looser side so that we can do looser top tension, not have to crank it, crank it, crank it, so that we're not gonna get as many thread breakages. Uh, if you will go back and look at posts from our Facebook page where people's talking about thread breakage, a lot of times you'll see at the very end of that chain of, of long messages of people being helpful, you'll see that they'll finally say, well, I finally loosened it enough that it quit breaking the thread. Well, that's because most of us, including myself, will quilt with our tension a little too tight. Okay, so let's talk about that. The first thing that you're always supposed to do before you put one stitch in your quilt is get your bobbin tension correct, okay? Now, you can only set your bobbin tension correctly and accurately with a full bobbin. So what does that mean? If your bobbin tension changes in the middle of a quilt and you're halfway done with the bobbin and you've done everything that you normally would do to check your tension to make sure everything's okay and now it's time for you to check that bobbin tension, which would be the last thing that I would check, okay? If I got a half of a bobbin, I would take another full bobbin of that exact color, pull that half bobbin out, use a full bobbin, pluck it in there, see if my bobbin tension's changed. Most of the time it has not. If it has not, then I'm gonna put that half bobbin back in and I'm gonna do some more detective work and try to figure out what's going on. At last resort, I will put a full bobbin in and then start all over again and use a full bobbin and take that half bobbin and throw it out and say, well, maybe there was something wrong with the last half of that bobbin. But that rarely happens that I do that, okay? so. What I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I wanted to be close to the camera so y'all can really see stuff, is first, I know most of y'all know how to thread your, your bobbin case, but we are gonna pretend like none of you know how, okay? I'm gonna make sure that the thread is coming off the top of my bobbin, okay? I'm gonna take my bobbin case and hold it in my hand where I see the slit right here, and I'm gonna put that bobbin case in, bobbin in my bobbin case, and I'm gonna pull that thread to the slit, okay? And then I'm gonna pull it underneath that flap, okay? Now, I'm gonna take about 10 to 12 inches off. I'm gonna lay it in my hand where it's flat like a donut, okay? And then I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna pull on it. Do y'all see that? Do you see how it's wobbling just a little bit? I would say that I might want to just a little bit tighten this bobbin case. So, I'm gonna take my screwdriver, and this right here, this black screw on my bobbin case, excuse me, is gonna be the screw that I make an adjustment with. And right now, if this was a clock, I would say that my clock is at 10 o'clock, okay? And since I'm gonna tighten it, I'm gonna turn that clock from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, because righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, okay? 
and on our bobbin case it is very small adjustments. So again, I'm going to lay it flat in my hand and then I'm going to pull. Now, in my opinion, and I'm being very ticky, it's wanting to come slightly out of my hand. So, <laughs> I know I barely made an adjustment. I'm going to just loosen it back just an itty bitty hair. And I don't, I can't see up close good anymore, y'all. So I might have gone further than 11 o'clock. But I'm being very, very picky right now. Okay. I'm a little bit happier with it. It's standing up in my hand. It's not coming out of my hand and standing up in the air. It's not falling down in my hand. It's just, woo! I just dropped it. Time out. Give me one second. Guess what, y'all? My spring fell out of my bobbin case. Which was the next thing I was going to talk about. I'm looking for it. Oh my goodness, this is so embarrassing. I found it. Guess what? That was not done on purpose. But it's going to make me have to show you something new. Give me one second, I'm sweating now. Oh my goodness. Let me get myself back together now. Hold on. This is why actors in Hollywood get to not do stuff in live. Okay, so Bob and Spring, Bob and Case. This was the next thing I was going to talk about. These are crucially important to our attention. And I bet you most of y'all are quilting with one that's worn out. It's called a spring because it's supposed to be springy. Okay? It's supposed to bounce your bobbin. Okay? Well, let me try to put this back in my bobbin case. Hold on. Oh my goodness. Nope, that ain't right. This was supposed to be a short video. I'm almost there. Hey, Erin. I think I got it. Let me see. Let me test it real quick. It might be too springy right now. I don't know. Okay. Do y'all see? Do you see how my bobbin is springy? It's supposed to be. If your bobbin doesn't do this, then get your spring replaced. You do not have to buy a whole brand new bobbin case like I thought you used to have to. Because a whole brand new bobbin case is super expensive. But the little springy thing, super cheap. Okay, but this little springy thing does a job. Okay, and what that job is, I don't know how to explain it, but it's something about how the road, there's a guy on here, Kyle, Keith Hayes with Long Arm Tech. He has a great, I read it today, a great article about why this springy thing is so important. I've read it a couple of times, but it takes me about five times to read something before it all clicks up here. So go and find his little article about it. It's very interesting. And then you'll go, oh, I'm always going to make sure my springy thing works right because it helps with stitch quality, okay? So if you were one of those MagnaGlide bobbin users, okay, I don't like them, but there are some people that rave about them and love them. Do not take your spring out, okay? Because you need it, even with those bobbins. 
Do you hear me? Don't take them out. You need your spring, okay? And look, they're not the easiest things to get in there. You have to make sure that you can't see them in this part of your bobbin case. They have to be seated in there perfect, okay? So take your time putting them back in there. Yes, Jenny, the tabs on the side only go in one way, which makes the position much easier. Listen to Jenny Horton, okay? She's right. Okay, so, hey, that prompted me to remember to tell you about the spring things mine falling out. Okay, how many minutes are we into this? I'm sure it's a lot. Okay, so I made a sample for y'all. Have y'all noticed that I haven't sewn on my machine at all? I don't plan on it. Not on this live, but maybe next week's live. Is there an up or a downward? Oh, it went too fast. Should a self well oh, that went too fast. Should a self well bobbin also spring? Every bobbin you put in there should spring. Is there an up or downward side of the spring? Um, yes, because I put it in wrong the first time I put it in. Y'all just didn't see me because I didn't show you. Okay, Deborah Brooks, I know where you're from, Illinois. Okay, 20 minutes, thank you, Jenny. Okay, so um, I'm actually gonna take my phone off my stand to do this next little section with y'all. So bear with me for just a second. Let me flip you around. Oh, how do you do that? Oh no. How do I flip? I thought I practiced this. I know I practiced this. It's disappeared. Jenny? Where's the flip button? Oh, I found it. Okay, so I wanna to talk to you. Um, do y'all like how great I quilt? This was letting y'all know that this was the top of my quilt top, okay? Okay, do you see these stitches, okay? This is pretty good tension. You can see a definite stitch. There's no straight line, okay? I got it, Jenny, I found it. Great stitching, great stitching, okay? This is my machine, and I have a Quiltmaker Pro 20 set at 54, okay? And I'm just giving you this example. Remember, I just told y'all don't think about the numbers, but I'm just going to show you the difference of what my stitching looks like at different numbers on my machine because I want to show you the grace that we have with our tension, okay? So this is 54. It looks really good, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you I'm very nitpicky, and I don't really like how this looks right here, and I don't really like how this looks. So... If this was my quilt, I actually would adjust it, but if this was any of your quilts, I would be like, that looks fantastic, go with it, okay? Because it really is pretty good tension, okay? Now, most people that show me their tension, it looks more like number 89, okay? I will see that it's not quite as much of a divine stitch. I can still see some stitches, but they're more like a straight line with a few defined stitches in there. And it's because people are terrified of the back side of their quilt looking bad, so they're trying to make sure that they don't have ugly stitches on the back by keeping their top a little bit too tight, okay? And, um, and, and, and that's okay too, okay? This isn't awful, but it's just not as pretty as it could be. So 54, 89, okay? Now, 22, look at these wobbly stitches. This is definitely too loose on the top, okay? And if I were to flip it over on the back side, holy moly, okay? So it just shows you, you know, you can't really tell about your loose stitches too much on top until you flip it over on the back, okay? But they're wobbly. You might even get a loop or two on the top, okay? Now, remember, 54, I told you, was pretty good stitches. Look at 67. It's pretty good stitches too. 54 to 67 on my machine is a pretty big jump. Guess how big of a jump it is. If we were just turning the knob on our machine, this knob, and remember, if you've ever taken any of my classes, if my thumb is on nine o'clock and I turn it to 12 o'clock, that's a quarter turn, but if, I, my, if my thumb is on nine o'clock, and I turn it all the way to three o'clock, that's a half turn. Well, 
my 54 to 67 is two is two half turns and a little bit more than that okay that is a lot because a lot of y'all will barely move yours. You'll be like, oh, I did a quarter turn. That was so much. No, it wasn't. So from 54 good stitches to 67 still good stitches was over two half turns. Okay. Now look, 43. This looks great too. These are great stitches. That was two and a half, that was over two half turns that I loosened my tension from 54. And I still have grace. And it's still great stitches. That's a lot of turns, y'all. That's a big difference from 67 to 43. That's four turns between these two numbers. That is a whole lot, okay? Now look here. Here's 101. It looks like somebody took a pen and just drew. It looks awful, okay? That is definitely too tight of top tension, okay? Okay, now I wanna show you the back. If you see this, this is when I was just tacking down my quilt. If you see little signs of this on the back side of your quilt, you definitely need to tighten your top thread because that is where your top thread is not winning the war with your bobbin thread, okay? It's not coming down there and pulling that bobbin thread up and bringing it into your batting, which is what it's supposed to do. But if you'll notice, on the back side with all the rest of my tension settings, no matter if they were too tight, just right, they all look really good except from when I had it on 22, which was drastically too loose. But my 67 looks good, my 43 looks good, even my 101 looks good, okay? So the back sometimes is much more forgiving than the front, okay? Hold on, I'm fixing to flip you back. Put you back up here. Okay, 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 okay. Now, Okay, I hope that was helpful. I wanna to talk to you about one more thing. Um, one other thing that will help with your stitch quality is going to be the settings that you have your machine actually set on. So if you have a Quilt Maker Pro 18, a Quilt Maker Pro 20, um, then you need to have, or a quilt, well, any of our Quilt Makers, any, any of them, no matter which model it is, you need to have them all set on cruise mode, okay? But if you have it on a Quilt Maker 18 or a Quilt Maker Pro 18, they need to be set on at least 7%. That's the same setting that we do if we're on Pro Stitcher too, okay? But at cruise mode and 7%, your machine is always gonna give you a steady, slow stitch so that when you go into points and you come back out of them, it gives it an extra stitch in that point when you're hesitating naturally, okay? Um, if you're on a Quilt Maker Pro 20, you wanna put that up at 8% because it won't let you do a 7%. It skips that number for some reason. Now, if you're on a Quilt Maker 15 or a Quilt Maker Pro 16, you have a different um, number. You don't have percentages, you have stitches per minute. Um, so you'll wanna put it like on 60, cause that would be 60 stitches per minute. So that would be like a, a stitch per second. Okay, if that makes sense. Um, so check your settings on your machine. The only time I truly would tell you to ever use precision mode would be if you're doing ruler work. Cause precise means that needle is gonna stop every time you pause, okay? And that also means that it's gonna stop in the up position, down position, mid stroke, wherever you stop. It does not do needle up or needle down memorization, okay? Now, I'm gonna look real quick and see if there are any questions that I might have missed um, because that was basically the majority of what I wanted to talk to you about on tension. Um, so if you wanna ask a question, start typing right now. I'm going to look real quick. Uh, oh, hold on. Does it keep stitching on cruise if you stop? Yes. No, Joan. Um, it does not keep, it does keep stitching on cruise if you stop. You have to actually hit the stop button on your handlebars for it to quit stitching. Cruise does mean it's going to constantly give you a stitch even when you're standing still, okay? 
Um, I see that Jenny's helping me out on some of the questions. Thank you, Jenny. Um, can you say those numbers again? Joyce, which numbers were you talking about? That was one minute ago, Joyce. Can you say those numbers again? Why my points were not good on cruise. What did I do wrong? Maybe you need to turn your cruise speed up just a little bit. Maybe you were going faster than the average quilter and maybe instead of 7% or 8%, maybe you should jump yourself up to 10, maybe 12%. One other thing I didn't tell you is also make sure your stitches per inches, stitches per inch are between 10 and 12. I helped someone the other day and theirs was only on nine and that's gonna give you some bad stitches because it's too big of a stitch, especially if you're doing lots of, of curves and points and intricate or small quilting um, because those stitches are too big to make do intricate small quilting, okay? Um, where do we find numbers in our settings to set tension? Where do we find numbers in our settings to set tension? Um, well, I don't want you to look at numbers, remember? I only showed you the numbers on my thing right here to show you how forgiving our num how forgiving our tension dials are and how much I had to turn to get to those numbers. Um, but I don't want you to be dependent upon numbers. I hope I'm understanding that question correctly. Um, please repeat precision mode. Precision mode means it's precise, means that when you move your machine, it's gonna make a stitch. When you stop your machine, it's gonna stop. No matter if the needle is up, mid-stroke, or down, it's just gonna stop. It doesn't care where the needle's at when it stops. So most people only use precision mode if they're doing ruler work. Um, any other questions? What causes eyelashes? Eyelashes can be caused because your bobbin case is not um, threaded correctly. Um, eyelashes can be caused because your top thread is not in the tension discs um, and dental flossed, okay? Um, do you know what I mean when I say dental flossed? If not, let me show you real quick. A lot of times, especially beginners, will not realize that in between these discs right here, Okay, it'll look like that thread's in between them like it does on mine, but they haven't actually taken these two threads and pulled them super tightly and literally dental flossed it like that's their teeth, okay? You have to be very, um, uh, I don't wanna say rough, but you have to be very vigorous with making sure that thread is actually in there because these long arms don't have a take up lever like our sewing machines do where the tension discs open up when we have our lever up and close when we put our foot our lever down, okay? Um, let's see. Um, and then eyelashes can also be caused um, from your tension just not being uh, correct. So let's say that your top tension is um, not tight enough, which would also be, you know, them not in the tension disc at all, okay? Um, my, on my Quilt Maker Pro 18, the number shows on the small screen below the tablet. Yes, but I don't, again, pretend like that number is not even there because I want you to be independent, not dependent. Okay? Cindy? Okay. I think you said always use Cruise and 7% for Quilt Maker 18. Is that correct? Yes, it is, Joyce. That is correct. You get an A today. Um... Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? I really enjoyed today. Um, I'm sorry I talked for 39 minutes. Uh, I am gonna do another live next week. I think I'm gonna do it, and, and I, but I have the liberty to change my mind if I want to. But I think I'm gonna do it on drag and drop. I'm having to learn how to do this live thing by myself without any help. So I've gotta figure out the logistics of how to teach you drag and drop with me and me only with camera work and doing it on the machine. So I'm gonna practice that a little bit between now and then. 
um, but I feel like drag and drop is a big thing y'all all struggle with. If you have other suggestions of videos that you would like me to do, because I think, knock on wood, I don't know, maybe not, I don't know. But I think I'm going to try to do one a week with y'all. Jenny's going to probably help me with some, maybe even Chris, my coworker. Um, but we're going to try to do one a week until we run out of material or until y'all quit needing help. Um, so, if you do, you can message me, email me, kmckenzie at genomi-america.com and give us some ideas of some other things that you'd like. Right now, I've got a lot in my head, but I will run out of ideas, okay? Um, if that is all, thank you all so much for joining me today, and I will see you all next week. I will announce a t day and time um, probably tomorrow, okay? Thanks again. See you all later. Bye.